Hey folks, welcome to the first video of topic nine in which we're going to be looking at the concept of American citizenship. Again, asking the essential questions of who should be a citizen? What requirements should someone meet in order to be eligible for citizenship? What rights, duties, and privileges should come with being a citizen? And these questions are things that we struggle with on an everyday basis. So again, they shouldn't require, they aren't questions that you can, that you should have an easy answer for. They're, uh, th they're, Many different people uh, hold these questions with different regards and have different opinions. So um, I'm going to try to keep this video at 10 minutes or less, but the first, some vocab you need to know in order to keep moving forward is to think about this or to know this. A citizen is a person who owes allegiance to the United States and is under the protection of its laws. It's someone who is, by documentation, someone who is confirmed by the United States government to say, yes, they are a protected by the government. They have rights that are protected by the constitution and they have the, they can access the full duties, responsibilities, and privileges that come along with being that, that come with being a citizen, including the right to drive and have a driver's license, the right to travel by having a passport and also the right to pay taxes and also serve as a juror um, on a jury. There are two different kind of concepts that kind of inform the process of how someone is defined as a citizen. There's Josoli, which it means the law of the soil, which means that if you're born on American soil, you are automatically an American citizen. There's also just sanguinous, the law of the blood, which means that if if you have an American citizen who moves abroad, who moves to a different country for 20 years and they have a kid with somebody over there, that kid is eligible for a uh, United States citizenship because their one of their parents is a United States citizen. So it doesn't necessarily matter that they weren't born on American soil, more so the fact that they had an American or a parent who was an American citizen. This also involves the concept of embassies. So if you're in a foreign embassy, that is considered United States soil. So if you have someone who's born at a U.S. embassy, they are considered an American citizen, even though they're in a completely different country. Naturalization is the process by, by which someone who's not a citizen becomes a citizen through legal, legal means by obtaining the right documents, applying for citizenship, citizenship, and I'll explain that a little bit further. Now, the Constitution does not outline or define what a, who a citizen is or what a citizen could be. So it's up to the interpretation of many different courts to decide, okay, what is a citizen of the United States? What steps do they need to take in order to make sure that they demonstrate a willingness to be here and also the ability to uh, contribute meaningful, meaningfully to American society? The 14th Amendment specifies that all persons born are naturalized in the United States are citizens. And nearly 90% of all Americans are citizens because they were born in the country. I will also say, do not use the phrase aliens or um, illegal immigrants. I do not. I am not on, under the persuasion that people can be that can be, that people can be illegal, nor can they be or nor are they aliens because they didn't come from outer space. So, um, I'm going through this. Um, the main thing you should know is that people can also lose citizenship as well. And that also the United States is very diverse due to the history of the country. And there are different ways of looking at this diversity, whether they came, whether people came here voluntarily by coming here on a ship, uh, coming through Ellis Island or Angel Island, for example, actually look up uh, Angel Island if you haven't heard of it, or through forced migration as the, in the concept of um, slavery and the Middle Passage. There's a concept that the salad bowl theory, which basically says that American diversity is best used as a salad bowl. So although there are some cherries, not cherries, but there are some cherub tomatoes, some lettuce, some dressing, some croutons, that they all come together to form a very beautiful blend that tastes delicious. I'm going to keep going through this, um, essentially thinking that as America, the United States has grown and changed, the makeup of the country has changed as well. That originally when the United States was started, there were either um, people, African-Americans who were mostly held under the chains of slavery, whites who are mainly agricultural, besides the few lawyers that framed the Constitution, and also uh, Hispanic Americans who were currently under, or sorry, Hispanic individuals who were either allied with the Spanish government or who were Native American, um, and who either lived in Spanish uh, territory or uh, were part of their own independent nations. A lot of pictures, so I'm just going through this. 
And I want you to think as you go through this, what is the process for how someone becomes a citizen? What kind of hurdles does someone have to go through in order to make sure that they can fully obtain that dream that many immigrants have, which is obtaining citizenship and being able to say to their children that they are documented migrants to the United States. So first of all, someone who comes to the United States has to come with documentation, with approval by the United States government prior to. Now, for individuals who do not go through that same process, they are not eligible to become a United States citizens unless they go through different means. But for most individuals who come here with documentation, whether they come here on a travel visa or they come here to study or they come here for many different reasons, the first thing that they have to do is make a declaration of into in, in, sorry, a declaration of intention. They have to say, look, I intend to become an American citizen and it is in my full vested interest to go through the immigration process, the citizenship process. So they have to file with the immigration or immigrant naturalization services. They have to file an application for a citizenship, just like you do for a job. They get interviewed. Um, and so from there, if they pass the interview, they have to go and actually take a test, which is very complicated. And most people who identify as American citizens cannot even pass the test. So why do we have undocumented immigrants, not, sorry, not undocumented immigrants, but documented immigrants who have to take a test, but then it's harder compared to American citizens who were born here who don't even know half the stuff on the test. I'm just telling you that uh, some people have raised that question and I want you to think about it. Then they uh, go through a naturalization ceremony, which if you go to one is actually a very cool thing. It's a very cool experience. I, I went to one as an intern, but um, you there at their, there in that environment, you pledge the oath to the United States and you actually um, are declared a United States citizen. Duties of American citizen include serving as a juror. So if called serving on a jury of your peers and being able to decide if someone is guilty or innocent in a, in a court case, pay taxes, um, woohoo, because um, someone has to, to pay for the education around you, to pay for roads, and also to obey the laws. That if you become an American citizen, that you have an obligation to follow the laws of the country that you are now a citizen of. And also, this is uh, the, the amendment or the addition to this particular presentation is to think about the privileges that come with being a citizen. So this includes the right to vote, getting a U.S. passport, applying for jobs with the in the government, and also in general. If you apply for any jobs, if it, if it asks you if you're an undocumented immigrant, they have, you have to go through a lot of hurdles to be able to get a work permit um, and the sponsorship of your employer to be able to work uh, lawfully. You can also, uh, if you also want to bring close family members to the United States, get benefits from the federal government, such as uh, social security and the fact that you can never be deported. These these privileges come with being a United States citizen. And I will leave you to go through this process, but I will also point out it is extremely expensive to be able to go through this entire process. The citizenship tests, and uh, at, the, at least at the interview, involve speaking in English, um, reading in English, and also writing in English. And so if your native language is not English, this can be extremely hard to go through this. Um, and, then, and then, of course, the U.S. history and government test, which is also another reason why this class is vitally important for anyone who is wanting to become a United States citizen in the future. As you go through, keep thinking about the obstacles or requirements in individuals should meet if they're United States citizens or if you think that the immigration system does not need to be reformed, because that is really the crux of the debate. And so if you answer the question, do, do, does, the United, does the immigration system in the United States need to be reformed or not? If you answer that question as no, what solutions would you propose? If you answer that question in a yes manner, consider how people might say no.